This is what the house from The Simpsons looks like in 3D. Before showing you the final 3D renders, I'll show you step by step how they were made and I'll also give you some tips for making your own. I've got the floor plans from Google and a lot of reference images. I load the floor plan in the 3D modeling software and then set it with a low opacity so I can start setting the basic walls of the house. Just start with a simple plane and leave edges where the windows and doors should be. Then just extrude the polygons and this is the end result. Now that we have the basic layout set, we need furniture. I'll work on the kitchen and living room, so I'll start modeling the piece of furniture we have here. I checked some references online and you can see that each part is typically one solid piece, probably glued together. We'll start by creating a simple box for the sides, then add another box on top. Just copy the back plane and move it forward. Then apply a thicken modifier to give it about 2 cm of thickness. Scale it back slightly, leaving around 2 mm of space from the edges to create that subtle contact shadow detail. Lastly, we'll add another box for the back panel and one more for the bottom shelf. You can then extrude the side parts a bit to create the table's fit. For the TV, I went for the 80s, 90s version and started with a simple box, then added a bevel and an inside extrusion. Added another box on top of it for the cable box and used the two primitive to add the wires. I got this telephone online and I just need to add some buttons to it. I'll create a simple box, then duplicate vertically and horizontally. For the table lamp, I started with a cylinder, which then I extruded and scaled to get the base of the lamp. Then extruded the top one one more time for the light. And added a new cylinder to make the lamp shade. I'm just extruding and scaling once more, and for this round part, I'm adding some edges in the middle and scaling them. Then I'll use a command that is typically known as Turbo Smooth in 3ds Max, for example. This adds more geometry and gets rid of all of those visible polygon faces. For the sofa, I found this one on 3D Sky, which isn't an exact replica, but I think it will work. For that iconic pink rug, I've used a different technique called UV Unwrap. It might sound complex, but it's pretty straightforward. First, I select the edges of the rug that I want to work with, and then I unwrap it, which basically means flattening the 3D model into a 2D layout. This makes it easier to paint on. Once that's done, I'll take the 2D version into Photoshop and paint the design directly onto it, making sure it stays within the boundaries of those lines. And this way, the design fits perfectly onto the 3D rug when I apply it back. Now just load the rug model into Lumion, and then I apply the texture I just created. One note though, set the map scale at zero. This is the best way to project textures that use this technique. I wanted to add some books on the side table and also a bit of green from a plant. For adding complex details like this, I'll be using the X1 app, who is today sponsored, by taking photos of it with my phone to make it in 3D. So I'll be using a technique called photogrammetry, which works by combining common points in different photos of an object to create a detailed 3D model. This works well on objects rich in features. Open the X1 app, and now I'll click on the scan button on the bottom. The app is super easy to use, even if you're not an expert. Here we have different scanning modes, but I'm choosing object scan mode to get a detailed scan. As mentioned here, always scan the objects in good lighting conditions. Now, on the bottom left corner, you can select if you want to record a video or take photos. I will select photos. Now, all you need to do is rotate around the object, taking photos from different angles. You can take a minimum of 20 photos, but I think around 60 to 80 photos is a good amount to have a decent 3D scan. When you are done, click this button and you will see all the photos taken. At the top, you can give it your scan name. Then I'll just click Upload. 
and when you go to your library, you can see the new scan available. From here, I'll export them in OBJ, ready to import them into Lumion. <laughs> Simple, right? I'll import the model and load the textures. And this is how it looks so far on my scene. You can download the X1 app from the Play Store or App Store and get your first scan and export free of cost upon sign up. Also, Explorazi has come up with an exciting offer for my subscribers with a 15% subscription discount. With subscription, you can scan and export limitlessly. And also earn money on the site by selling your models to fellow creators on X1. Download the app from the link in the description below and use the coupon NUNU15 to get a special discount. For the painting on the wall, start with the basic cube and extrude it inward to create a frame. Next, use a tube primitive with a small radius to make the hanging wire. This will give the impression that the painting is suspended from the wall. Don't forget to add a small cube at the top for the nail. Once you've modeled the painting, bring it to Lumion. For the materials, I use the wood texture available in Lumion's library. As for the artwork itself, I searched online for Simpsons painting and found this image. Apply it as the texture and there you have it, an iconic painting on the wall. For the curtains, I have tried a different approach. I used weight maps and morph maps to make a nice curtain. But I didn't like the result, since the curtains from The Simpsons look much more simple than this. So instead, I've modeled a simple plane, pushed some of the vertices to create the curtain waves and added some noise. And here's the curtain on the scene. Having most of the models ready, it's time to build the scene. I'll be using Lumion, which is a 3D rendering software. This is the view I'll be rendering and from here we see a bit of the kitchen. Lumion has a large library of objects that I can easily place in my scene. So I'll add this fridge, which looks similar to the one in The Simpsons. Next, we also need a dining table and some chairs. So I modeled the dining table and used the plane which I simulated as a soft body to create the tablecloth. So we have a nice cloth drop on the table. I'll search the Lumin library for chairs that match better the reference. These ones will do. I'll just add four of them and rotate them to make it look like someone actually lives here. I'll be adding other kitchen utensils too. The kitchen is a place where you have a lot of stuff. So it's good to just fill the space with these items. Now that all the objects are in place, it's time for the materials. The Simpsons house is bright and colorful, so I'll color pick the materials from the reference images. But I'll use a material on the walls that adds some surface variation. This gives an extra degree of realism. For the rest of the materials, I'll try to match the colors of the references. I add surface imperfections to make the materials better for a house like The Simpsons. This can be found in the decal section in Lumion. These smudges, water stains and other dust and scratches add a layer of realism. Even in a movie like Toy Story, they aim for realism but with a cartoon feel. You can see these surface imperfections everywhere. Now for the lighting, The Simpsons lighting is mostly flat. I'm keeping the same look and feel, but since we are working in the 3D space with realistic light and shadows, we will be transforming it from that flat look. Lumion offers a variety of skies that can be quickly applied to any project. So I begin by playing around with different skies to see which one sets the right mood. Next, I focus on the interior lighting. In the early stages, it's always good to try different things. You never know, as you experiment, you might stumble upon a lighting scheme that really enhances the look and feel of your space. After experimenting for a while, I settled on a daylight setup. I placed another light near the window and added some accent lights in the kitchen. Without these accent lights, the kitchen area was just too dark. To avoid having a blank window with just HDR texture, I added a background and trees to the outside. They will cast shadows and shapes on the interior. And this is the final result of The Simpsons Living Room. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.